Hello, this is Bruno Pelletier Backer. What I'm uh, going to talk about today is uh, diminished chords. And um, in particular, one of the most uh, usable ways of, of uh, dealing with the diminished chords, it's going to be as a substitution for a dominant chord. So I'm not going to go into the, um, the mathematical or, or you know, even the theoretical explanations of that. Um, maybe we can discuss that some other time, but this is going to be more um, uh, a practical approach. So let me say I'm taking a, um, a 2 5 1 in the key of G major. So that's my one chord, a G major 7. So the two chord is going to be A minor 7, and then I'm going to go to a D7. So D7 from this A minor, I could probably play a D9, right? That would be a very good choice going into, a, into the G major 7th. But here, to make it maybe a little more interesting, I'm going to play a D7 flat 9, and then going into my G major 7th. So uh, again, I have A minor 7 to D7 flat 9, What's interesting here is we hear um, on top of the chord this little descending line. So it's very smooth. It's uh, it's good voice leading. It's uh, anyway, it's perfect, right? So that's a D7 flat nine. So let's take a look at the D7 flat nine. If I wanted to uh, move the bass down to the sixth string. I'm essentially playing the same chord, and what it amounts to is playing the fifth in the bass. So I'm still thinking D7 flat 9, but there's no D anymore because my D note is replaced with the A, which is the fifth of the chord. And that is an A diminished seventh chord. Right here, this is a very, uh, a very um, common grip for a diminished seventh chord. So what I'm going to do now then is A minor 7, and then I'm going to follow that with my A diminished 7, which is you know replacing the D7, and then I'm going to the G major 7 chord. Alright, so in time I would have something like this. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, perfect. And what is easy to remember is that I get to build a diminished seven chord from the root of the two chord that I just played, right? A minor seven followed by A diminished seven and then resolving into the one chord. So that little concept, we can use it uh, just about with any, any uh, two, five, one that we, we can think of. Let's say, and I wrote a page of, um, you know, a PDF that you can download. So um, what I just did on your page was example number two. Example number one was simply uh, the D7 uh, flat nine. Uh, example three, then I'm going to play my A minor seventh up here. Then I'm going to replace it with the A diminished seventh chord that is right there. And then I get to resolve into my G major 7. So in time I have this, 3, 4, okay, easy enough. Uh, the next example, which is labeled example 4 on your page, um, is going to be this A minor 7. So it's exactly the same chord that I have up here, but then now is transferred onto the um, to the um, uh, top four strings. So A minor seven flat five. Here's my A diminished seven chord, replacing the same D seven, and then resolving into the G major seven. See, it's all the same uh, same concept. So you play two chord from the root of that two chord. You 
play now a diminished seven chord, and then you resolve to a nearby one chord. Uh, and that works uh, also in minor keys. So the next, um, the next line of examples uh, will show you what would happen if I were playing then in the key of G minor. So my one chord is going to be now G minor six. And the two chord is going to be A minor seven, five, five. which then is followed by my same A diminished seven chord. Get it, right? And then resolving into the, the G minor six. So in time, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. And uh, then the same uh, idea can be used up here. And that's going to be example six on uh, on your page of, uh, on your PDF. So I'm going to have my A minor seven flat five here, followed by the same A diminished that we were playing in the major key. See, the dominant is going to be the same whether we are in the major key or in the minor key. The two chords that are different are the two, so the the two, the minor seven flat five in minor, and the regular minor seven. Um, with a perfect fifth in major, and then of course the one chord is a major seven chord if we are in a major key, and uh, a minor six chord if we are in a minor key. Uh, and then I'm going to resolve to this one, so that's an A minor six. It's it's not the easiest grip. Um, often enough, we can actually uh, omit the fifth of this chord uh, and just play those three notes, which I usually play like this with the fourth finger. So it gives me this in time. Three, four, two, three, four, three, four. We get the same sound and, and this grip is easier than this fuller one. What else do we have? Uh, the next example, uh, line seven, is then the full turnaround. What would be a three, six, two, five, one. So, uh, I'm in G still, and I'm, I'm switching back to the major key here. So here's my three chord, B minor seven, followed by a B diminished, which is really an E seven flat nine. Now, and then the same A minor seven, followed by A diminished seven, which is really a D seven flat nine, and then resolving to a G major. And then I, I see I even put a G six at the end to kind of. Uh, have a more stable uh, ending. So in time, I would have this thing. And those are, um, the first few chords are two beats per chord. So uh, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's the G6 to finish, okay? Um, so it's basically the same idea. Um, just using the, the diminished chord. And then at the very end, I have an example um, that you're probably familiar with if you followed this uh, vlog. We talked for uh, several weeks about the song Autumn Leaves. And um, so here's an example using the first of eight measures of Autumn Leaves, making use of our diminished chord in place of the dominant. So. Um, the melody in that key is like this, right? Ba do do ba, ba do do ba, ba ba do ba, ba do do ba. Right. So let me play the chord slowly. So the first chord is C minor seven. The next chord should be F seven flat nine. But then I'm going to play now a diminished chord from the C. Right, so I have C minor 7 to C diminished, resolving to B flat major 7 chord. Then it goes to E flat major 7. Um, but here, what I put in was this chord. So this chord, you could think of it as two things. Um, most likely it's an, a, a B flat 6, right? I would have B flat as a root, D the third, F the fifth, and G the major 6. But it also happens to be an E flat major seventh with the ninth, the 
F, right? But I am moving the E flat root down to the sixth string, the fifth. So then I get this the same uh, chord that I was calling a second ago uh, B flat six. Now I'm thinking of it as an E flat major seven with a nine, but with the fifth in the bass. Um, that way we get this continuity with with the, the bass C minor uh, F7 we have the fifth in the bass B flat major seven the root then E flat major seven with the fifth in the bass and then we continue down with A minor seven flat five going to A diminished which we now know is a D7 flat nine and then resolving to the one chord in minor here, uh, G minor six. And there you have it. So um, I think I'll put in another video following this one with a few more examples, a few more inversions of, of this, uh, of this um, concept of the diminished chord. But for now, this, this is it. So just, uh, just explore those examples and then see how you can use that same idea in uh, in the, the few standards that you're playing already. Okay, so take care. See you then.